Happy Star Wars Day! Joy! I didn't even know it was Star Wars Day. I just happened to be wearing the shirt and somebody pointed it out, so. Happy Star Wars Day. But, with that, what's up, TubeUbe? Welcome back to the Plot Coalition YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my two tips to get way better animations in Unreal Engine 5.4. Which, if you don't know, right now I am working on a short set in the Red Dead Redemption universe. So, if that's something you're into, Cowboys, Outlaws, that fun jazz, then go ahead and subscribe because we're making a short film about it, animated in Unreal Engine 5. But before I go any further, I do want to quickly shout out Rococo, who sent me this head rig for this project. Uh, it's an incredible piece of hardware, and if you want to get into mocap, animation, you're into VTubing, stuff like that, definitely go check them out. This head rig is pretty fantastic. Very lightweight, very well balanced. You don't even realize you're wearing it once you've gotten used to it. So check out their link in the description. They sent me this for this project, so huge shout out to them. Check them out. All right, and with that, we are going to get right into it with what you would probably use the head rig for. That is facial mocap, and specifically what we're using is MetaHuman Animator. And this tip is one that I have never seen online. I came across it on accident while doing my MetaHuman Animator songs. And when I did it, I was like, oh my word, this is so much better. <laughs> so if you don't know, MetaHuman Animator is kind of infamous for having that over-exaggerated or rubbery look when you do the solves. This is mainly because it's interpreting things that it thinks it should be doing, and it's usually pretty accurate, and the solves still look really good. But Unreal Engine prioritizes being very, very fast. It wants to be able to turn around things very quickly, which for like previs and stuff, fantastic. But if you want to get better solves, this is how you're going to do it. So this is not a MetaHuman Animator tutorial. I'm going to assume you've already basically gotten to this point or have done a solve before. If you want a full-on tutorial on doing that, definitely let me know. I'm looking into pushing out more tutorials and stuff for members, so you can definitely see about making one around that specifically. But you stay away from me, you sick bastard. Once you have your performance asset prepared, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down and there's a little box that has been checked that says skip per vertex solve and this takes a considerably longer time to solve the animation but essentially what it's going to do is take the metahuman dna that you've set up and it's going to use every vertex of that face with what it's trying to track on your face and solve it that way rather than do everything approximately it's going to try and do it exact and when you uncheck this it does take quite a long time I did a take that was probably about six minutes. It took about four hours to process. So it definitely takes a while, but the results are amazing. So definitely, definitely start using that in your animation workflows because it looks so much better than just doing the traditional solve. If you just need it for previs or whatever, do the traditional solve. It totally looks good. It's totally fine. But if you're looking for that really close accuracy, I highly recommend checking off that box so it does a per vertex solve and you're gonna get much, much better MetaHuman Animator animations. Do 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 do! Number two. Tip number two has to do with retargeting your animations of your body mocap. So in the case for this project that we're working on, the actors came and they did the full performance with the helmet on, with the motion capture suit on, and we were able to capture everything that they did. And it looks really, really good. But there are a few housekeeping things you want to keep in mind when you're recording your performance capture. Use actors. It's always gonna bring across a much better performance, unless you're doing something like VTubing and like you are the character, but an actor is gonna bring a lot of believability to a character that doesn't exist. And there is no truer form of like a character that doesn't exist than working with these digital characters in Unreal Engine because they only exist in the computer. It's time for everyone's favorite. Work. But the second part of that is going to be making sure you have precise blocking and you're directing the actor's movements because how they act and come across on screen will be imperative to how the performance capture actually looks. So if you have a character who's just standing still the whole time and they're not interacting with anything, like that's gonna end up looking pretty stale and pretty loop. 
but making sure they have very intentional blocking and movements is gonna make it feel much more alive. And that's just in general for filmmaking, but specifically when you're doing this kind of animation, being able to have something, a motivation for them are gonna go a long way in one, immersing them in it, but two, also just making that animation look that much higher fidelity. But in that same vein, do not overact. That is something that I see way too often in motion capture scenarios is somebody gets a mocap suit and it's really, really cool because it's new and you know different technology, but they overact it. It looks like somebody who just put on a mocap suit for the first time and they're super excited about it and whatnot. And like, as exciting as it is, you really want to dial it back and focus on the subtlety of the performance. And then finally, you're also gonna want to capture reference. This can be from anything like a phone, or if you just have a spare camera, setting that up just to record it so you have a reference for when you're animating. If there's anything that the motion capture maybe didn't pick up, or that you want to try to work on more in animation, having a reference is fantastic. And with all that, when you are recording, make sure that you are double checking every single take, make sure everything runs smoothly during the take, but then especially double check it after the fact to make sure you got a clean take because nothing is worse than getting the mocap back and it's all jacked up. So always be double checking before your actor gets out of the scene. Super duper important. Well, I'm being shady-ish, I'm being shady-ish. And all this brings us to the tip number two which is auto aligning bones when retargeting in Unreal Engine 5.4. So originally the retargeter in Unreal Engine 5, it used a process called IK retargeting and it did an approximate job so you could really apply the motion capture to any kind of skeletal mesh. Now for at least bipedal characters, you can actually auto align all of the bones from one character to another. And chances are if you're doing mocap of a human character, and the character you're trying to put it on is human-like, then this will work. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and create an IK asset for your character. Unreal Engine now does this automatically. You click two buttons, you go boom, bang, you have a rig. Just make sure everything is scaled properly or else you're gonna have problems. And then you're gonna create your retarget asset, throw it up, put what you wanna retarget from. In our case, we're using the Unreal Engine mannequin since that's what I exported my mocap as. I can set that as the retarget source and the retarget target is going to be our character. And then right over here, you're going to stop running the retarget. You're gonna go into the edit mode and you are going to drop down this bar and you're gonna to go to auto align bones. And it's going to take your character and put all the bones in the same position as the Unreal Engine mannequin. Now when you run the retarget, the mocap that you get on your character is exactly what you recorded. It's not approximate. It's not trying to do something that's kind of like it. It is exactly what you recorded. Which means when you blend these two tips together, you are getting one-to-one -one what your actors recorded. Not something that is kind of like it. Exactly what was recorded. That is in. Now, one thing you might notice is sometimes the IK retargeter doesn't do a fantastic job. Now you can either offset these IKs or you can turn off the IK entirely when you're doing the retargeting process. And if you're using Rococo, then you already have your foot locks and everything translating. So you should be all set. And finally, I do really quick want to touch on modular control rigs because they're super cool, but I don't know what happened in the latest update of Unreal Engine 5.4 because it broke all my control rigs and now they all look like this. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. And that's after I tried to fix them, so. I don't know. All right, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, go ahead and let me know in the comments and give the video a like. It really, really helps. I know you hear that on other YouTube videos. And it sounds really stale because everybody says it, but it's true. And we all know if a bunch of people say something on the internet, it has to be true. If you're interested in being a part of my projects in the future, consider joining the Discord. That's where I kind of announce all that stuff. And hey, you know what? You made it this far in the video, maybe consider subscribing. Who knows? Who knows what kind of crazy stuff might happen? I might even do I think it's time for my workout. Oh.
seamless. But look at that. It looks amazing. 